Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. On salvage hunters in Norfolk. Blimey, look at this thing. Drew's keen on buying. I like that. But less keen on sailing. Yuppie? Not really. <laughs> In Great Yarmouth, he struggles to make a deal at the Hippodrome. So is everything in here off limits or is anything for sale? Well, I don't know. It's sort of... Drew, how you doing? Drew, nice to meet you. And he meets his match in Manchester. 700 quid. That's too much. Well, where could you buy it cheaper? Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Oh, that's interesting. That's astonishing. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Oh, wow, look at this, T. Tracy Bang. Gets in. He'll cross land. Whoa, it's all come down my back. There we go. <laughs> this is fun, Drew. And water. Heads down. In his hunt for treasure. Go on, then. Hit me with a price. There's nothing he won't buy. I mean, it has been deactivated. With help from his wife, Rebecca, and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. <laughs> Antique salvager Drew Pritchard is always on the lookout for unique items for his showroom in Conwy, North Wales. Today, he's embarking on a salvaging trip to Norfolk to follow up some new leads. They're not obvious locations, but Drew hopes that they might result in some rare stock. This week, I'm going to be visiting some really quirky, different places, very intriguing. But as they say, never judge a book by its cover. These are the sort of places that dealers don't usually get into, so I could get my best stuff here. Drew's salvaging companion, T, is joining him for the Norfolk trip. Yeah, there's that new shopping centre, isn't there, they've got? We're not going shopping. Their first stop is Martham, a small village within the Norfolk Broads, an area of over 300 square kilometres, comprised of a series of rivers and lakes. We're in Norfolk today to visit a guy called Gordon, and he's in Martham Boats. The company runs a hire fleet, motor cruisers, yachts, day launchers, day sailors. We fit the engines, we do fiberglass, we do woodwork. You name it, with the boat, we do it. <laughs> Founded in 1946, Martham Boatyard has had both time and space to accumulate huge amounts of surplus boat furnishings. Yeah, you know you love going on boats. Not keen on boats, but I can appreciate from a bar next to a dock a boat. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you're going to go on a boat today, then? No. <laughs> There's no need whatsoever for me to go on a boat today. Blimey, look at this thing. Look at that. Gordon. Hello. Hi, watch Drew. your step there, mate. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice Hi, to meet you. How are you doing? Uh, see? All right, thank you, Dad. This is amazing, this building. Yes, yes. Was it an aircraft hangar? It was. It was brought here uh, just after the war. OK. Put up just what? before my time. So you must have been apprenticed here, then? Yes, I was. I'd done five years. And then I went and served two years for Her Majesty. OK. In the Air Force. Oh, I thought you were going to say prison. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say prison then for a minute. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we're here to have a look round. Yeah. Um, I believe there's some specific areas you want me to look at some storerooms. Should we start that side? Yeah, OK. And then we can come in here and. Sure. Really. OK. Right. Well, lead on. Let's know where we're going. As a fully operational boatyard, Martin Boats is not traditional hunting ground. But given that it's not been previously open to salvagers, Drew hopes to find some authentic, untouched boat paraphernalia. So what's this, just storage? That's, uh, yeah, mainly storage. What's in there? 
You've got an old gramophone if you're interested. No, they, you always find those. No, always right. coming up. Gra gramophones right. and scales everywhere you go. Yeah. Your furniture. You've got all sorts in here. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that para big paraffin lamp. Pressurised paraffin lamp. Yeah. So you just build the pressure up in there and then let it go. Yeah, there you go. Look, look, look. I oh, like that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yes, he made for... Let's have a look. Oh. Specially made for W.R. Ruddock. W.J. Ruddock, Stratford, London, East 15. Uh, so where did he get this, then? Did it come off a boat? No, it didn't come off a boat. It came uh, from a house which we bought. That I like. Mm. Is this for sale, Gordon? Yes, if you... If the price right. is right. If the price is right. <laughs> yeah. This enamel gas lamp was custom made for a private home and is approximately 100 years old. Once restored and converted to electric, it could sell for as much as £400. Sixty quid. A little bit more. Seventy-five pound. Eighty-five. Eighty. <laughs> Thank you. Bingo. A fantastic light. I think the best thing about it is, inside the white rim inside, it's got who it was made for and a date. I don't quite understand why they've done that, but it's certainly quirky and it makes it, and it makes this a one-off find and something I'm unlikely to find again. Don't you like that tea? I do, and you can tell you like it, because oh, you're, you're waxing lyrical. Oh, I really like it. With a successful deal under his belt, Drew follows Gordon to another of the boatyard's numerous storage facilities. Oh, I see, OK. You can have a look. And see if there's anything. I don't know. What a brilliant shed. Is there any market in these old, yeah. old wooden pulleys? Yeah, there is actually. You're dead right, there is. I wouldn't sell them. There's a box. You what? I wouldn't sell them. You won't sell these. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought that's... I found something, and you won't sell <laughs> it. That's, a, that's, a, that's an old, it's an old fox. Tell me that, isn't it? Really, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. sell you because you know I want those. Look at the phosphor bronze yeah. runners in there as well. Yeah. These are. There. There's a whole box full. Yeah. You don't want these old things, do you? You replace them with nice yeah. plastic ones now. Every now and again, you say to somebody, oh, I like the look of that, and you can see their face straight away. It's like, no, nope. he just does this thing. He's got to tell. So every time he sees something that he doesn't want to sell, he goes, like that. He sort of smiles and looks away. Not for sale? No. Nope. Not at all? No. Nope. <laughs> Let's keep looking. There's bound to be something else in here. Helm wheel? Ship's wheel. No. No? No, definitely not. <laughs> so what would it cost me to take one of these home with me today, in this condition? Probably 200, I suppose. Really? That much? Mm. It cost me 200 pounds to buy this yeah. today. <laughs> but they're not for sale. No. Not at the moment, Drew. Can we have a look up there? What is up yes, there? Yes, of course you can. Uh, very. Have a look. Anything any good? Anything. So, if there's anything you want. Can you come and foot the ladder, T? Yeah. Yeah. You missed the big dead rat. That's quite a big rat, isn't it? It's a big rat. It smells as well. All right, T? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, just stick your foot on there for us, yeah. your, consider <laughs> your considerable size should help hey. you. Yeah, you got it? My spelt physique. This whole boat up here. If we were to take this ladder away, Gordon, we'd have peace and quiet for the rest of the day, then. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot up there. It's just moulds and old desks and stuff. Nothing sort of juicy. No, there's nothing up there. That's what your mum always used to say about you. And... Hey? Nothing up there. To be honest, it's good, actually, up here, because I can see everything else that's in the building. 
in one place. The next stop is the sail room, built into the roof of the aircraft hangar, where sails were traditionally made and stored in order to avoid dust from the busy boatyard. Just marvelling at all the timber you've got. You've got some fantastic pieces of timber. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. lying around. We have to. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh, hello. Yeah. These big pile of lights here. Yeah. Did these come out of here? Uh, as far as I know. Ah. Got one out. Are they for sale, Gordon? Yeah. They are? Yeah. 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 yeah oh, they're not in bad nick either, are they? No. They're in good nick, one. Yeah, they're, missed, they're missing the gallery off the top completely. Do you have the top piece for them? There's like a... Um, still think we could probably do something with those. Enamel lights like these are a popular feature in restaurants and shops. Replacing the missing parts is expensive, but with significant restoration, they could sell for approximately £150 each. How many have you got? 12, 13, 14, 15. 15, what do you want for them? I know what I want to pay for them, but you can tell me what you want for them. 60 quid, please. <laughs> Gordon! <laughs> I think I need to lower your expectations slightly. How about... 10. And that's me done. 20. No, really, it's me done because they're missing their gallery. 15. No. Okay. This is really easy, isn't it? 15. No. <laughs> 10. Go on, then. Lovely, thank you. Right, we'll have those. Okay. So, where else next, then? Two solid purchases have been made, but with the yard yet to reveal any authentic bolt salvage, it's time for Drew to start rummaging in the darker recesses. Oh, yes, look at that. No. Look at this, T. Oh, yeah. Have a look. <laughs> See what there is. <laughs> Drew's at home now. It's a big pile of old, what would you call it? Uh, stock. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. God, yeah. I think we'll try in there first. Being able to look round that building is just the most fun for me. There's stuff everywhere. You can barely move, but there's always that off chance that there's one bit right at the back. So you've got to look everywhere. These two. Yeah, there's two of them. Yeah, but the condition's not great. What did these come off, Gordon? They come off a, a moat launch. These deck chairs probably date back to the 1940s. Restored, they could be worth approximately £150 each. What would you want for those? Give me a price. Drew and T are in the popular holiday destination of the Norfolk Broads. They're hunting in Martham Boatyard, where Drew's dislike of sailing hasn't affected his love of buying. Thank you. But with no real boat salvage found so far, Drew needs to convince owner Gordon to part with these deck chairs at the right price. Give me a price. Forty pound. Go fifteen, you can have them. Take a chance on them, can we? Yeah, it's not. A yeah, lot go of on, Gordon. We'll have a deal at that. All right. Yeah, let's have them. Let's okay. have them. Okay. These are not the best quality things in the world, but one thing they do do, which a lot of this sort of boat stuff or stuff from trams and trains doesn't usually do, is it sits straight on the floor, sits flat, it's level so it can translate easily into another use. It's been a successful salvaging day, but before Drew leaves, Gordon decides he can't let him go without taking him out on one of his boats. But Drew is apprehensive. Yeah. Is there many sharks? He's scared of sharks. Go on, on you get it. It looks a bit rough. 
Go on, then, you get it. Don't insult the man's boat. <laughs> <laughs> right, then. Ooh. You happy? Not really. <laughs> it's, a bit, right. it's a bit sicky already, isn't it? No, you're all right. Yeah. I have a funny feeling you've done that before, going... Once or twice. <laughs> yeah, These are right. all yours. Oh, you're joking. Just watch your front. Right. And let your front go. Yeah. Just go the opposite way. All right? All right. Where are you going, Joe? Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, a bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch him. I see. have to swerve around that bit. I should imagine, though, right, when the sun's shining, it's not terrible, is it? Oh, no. Not terrible, that's as good as you're gonna get with it. It's not terrible. It's a road bridge, yeah, look. Do you wanna take this one? Yeah, I'll take that you one. You take it. <laughs> Just I'd hate to crash one of your boats, so it'd be really unpopular then, wouldn't I? Watch out on this bridge. Oh blimey. <laughs> Heads down. Heads down. <laughs> You can, you can see the marks on there where people have it. <laughs> That's quite good fun. Yeah. Again, again. We'll on the way back. <laughs> Gordon, that was um, an experience. Yeah. Thanks very much. All right. I'd love to say that that has changed my outlook on boats, but it hasn't. You can keep it. <laughs> it's not for me. Gordon, top fellow, we really enjoyed that. And you're making contacts, that's, that's all it is. We're making some contacts as well. So, you enjoy yourself today, then? I did enjoy myself today. It was, um, it was good, actually. Yeah? That was a good one. Uh, I was just thinking, you know, with the way your eyes lit up when you saw that room in the sail room. Yeah. I think you're, you're that far away from never throwing away newspapers. <laughs> And, and I think I could turn into a bit of a I think, man yeah. who lives in newspapers. Yeah. yeah. Shut in. No, it'd be fine. Yeah. I can't really keep anything. Well, seriously, yeah. I'm never going to turn into a hoarder. You've got a box of your own toenails somewhere, haven't you? The following day, the Norfolk salvage hunt continues. This is proper oh. old English. It is, yeah. Isn't it? I bet you could get an all-day breakfast all day here. All day. <laughs> Today, T, we are by the seaside. E. It's a short trip down the road to the town of Great Yarmouth, where Drew has organised another quirky visit. We are going to go and see a guy called Peter Jay, formerly of Peter Jay and the Jay Walkers. Right. He was extremely famous in really? the 1960s. Yes. This guy we're going to see toured with the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Yeah, that's like royalty, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sort of made a few quid, I'm sure. And what he did, he bought a theatre come circus down on the front here in Great Yarmouth in the right. mid-60s with his father. This is the last purpose-built circus building surviving in the country. When we first came here 30 years ago, there was nothing here at all. There was no, no old stuff, and we're gradually collecting it, putting it back where it belongs in the building. You like a bit of circus stuff anyway, don't you? So... I, I really, really love circus and fairground sort of memorabilia, signage. Who knows? Worth a look. How are you doing? Well, Good to meet you. Time. Thank you. All right, Peter. Let's see. Oh, How you nice doing? I think the only thing is, it's wow. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> wow, that is incredible. Built in 1903, the Hippodrome Circus Great Yarmouth is one of only four circus buildings in the world to incorporate a water feature beneath its circular stage. 
the theatre regularly shows off its unique pool with spectacular performances by synchronised swimmers. We've had six elephants in, lions, tigers, crocodiles, you name it. We think Charlie Chaplin was here yeah. when he was a kid, Houdini's been here. Wow. So they've all actually walked in this space. It's quite amazing. I'm blown away completely, completely. But I, I believe you have a museum here. We have. Um, just a few things that I'm a bit of a hoarder. Well, I'd be keen to see that. I call it collecting, but it's, yeah. my wife calls it hoarding. <laughs> but well, I'll, I'll show you. I think you'll be interested. Yeah. Great. Lead on. Let's have a look. Peter leads Drew and Tease straight down into the basement, where, in an area formerly used as a holding pen for the circus animals, he has assembled a museum which showcases the life of the Hippodrome. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Two bits. Just uh, <laughs> old bits and pieces. I love this. I love the big fish. They're where fantastic, they, where, did, they, what, where they, did they come from? They were here originally prior to when we first came here, so they're probably 1950s. Yeah, these are great. Look at the, look at the fins on them, T. This is great. It's really good. That's us at the Beatles show. There. Wow. So did you meet all of the Beatles? Yeah, we were with them every night. We'd play cards with them. They couldn't go anywhere, so they would... They'd come into the building early. We often used to have sort of jam sessions with them in, in the... Mm. Just, just with sort of the staff watching, do two shows. They were straight out after the end of Twist and Shout, they were gone. And then we'd probably be two hours before we could get out because of all the crowds outside. You have to say you've had an amazing life. Yeah, it was, it was, it's it's not, it's great. It's not been boring, has it? Was, yeah. No, it's been great no. fun. <laughs> I like these as well. Look at, what is that? Are they they are the, the famous tem temple blocks from the old sort of traps, drum kits. Right. And, uh, I love all this stuff. Yeah, this sense. washboard yeah. was actually played by the chimp band. We had a chimp band in here before our time, and that was the thing they used to play. Well, they better look in the nim as well. <laughs> I think, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's marginally. not very fair, is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, it's not very fair, that. <laughs> all right, something I want to show you. That is a giant-sized elephant car. Wow. And the driver is to sit in the top and drive it. And it's like got this paws out in the front and the back. Amazing. <laughs> but if you ever hear somebody who wants a full-size giant fiberglass, fiberglass elephant, elephant, I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I wanted to show it to you. It was a little bit of a better look at it. The cheap to run, though, because they run on peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, he's here all week. I can give you a job <laughs> in the summer. Can you... Uh... Oh, I see. Yeah, look, it's got a proper... The steering wheel and everything. Yeah, it's got... Well, it's not got a steering wheel on it anymore, but everything else is there. Let's have a look. Wiper motor. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's a strange one, it really is. Um, I've definitely not been offered one of those before, but I've also never been asked for one. Cool. All right. Not for yeah. me, Peter. Uh, okay. Nice too, try, though. Slight, even too mad for me, I'm afraid. Right then. I went to see a show recently, and the guy came up with a carrier bag at the end, and he gave me, gave me four clown shoes, which we're going to display properly. But I oh, mean, they're lovely, aren't they? They're beautiful. For yeah. circus enthusiast they Drew, would... the museum is a treasure trove of oddities. They would sell well. But any hope of buying from Peter's significant collection is starting to look unlikely. So is everything in here off limits or is anything for sale? Um, well, it's sort of nearly all this stuff in here is mm. with the place, so it's... Uh, yeah. So I'll show you in... There's more. Oh, yeah, there's... Uh... Whoa. Oh, I like this. But, um, these, these lights, the white lights, where did they come from? Well, they are actually out of an old chicken shed, and I sort of had earmarked them to go up in our... Got a fantastic loo upstairs, which I'll show you later on. Oh, OK. Wherever I go, I seem to find these industrial lights, but these ones are a bit different. They're the right colour. They're the best colour for me, the one I prefer. At the moment, I'm building up a selection of white lights for a show, so it's great if I could buy them. What about those? Those for sale? Well, I could maybe, maybe. have my arm twisted with them. What do you want for? What do you want for those four? Four. I know they sell now for one hundred and fifty pounds each. More. Yeah, more. Maybe. More done though. Yeah. That's the key. Done. We well, they, 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 we re-engineer all the internals off them and put yeah. all new fittings yeah. and everything in them. They've got a nice patina with them because they've slightly worn. You got yeah. they're not they're not just no, too that's, too. That's pristine. You say you're selling them to me now. Well, they, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, 
I, I like the same things you yeah, do. This yeah. is the trouble, you know, yeah, that they're... Yeah, they're cool. So what sort of money, then? I know what I usually pay for them. Well, I'd, to sell them, I'd want to get about £75 each for them. That's going to be too much. Yeah. Yeah, it's too much for me. I'm at... 30 quid each. Yeah, there's a big... Oh, for that, big... I'd rather keep them. Go on, then. Next one. Go on. Carry Next on. One. We'll carry on. Pete's got them, he's saved them, he's got some somewhere else in the building. They're going to get used, that's fine, that's good enough for me. Oh, look at these old letters. Right, is anything in here for sale? Well, there might be a few bits and pieces, things that I've got quite a lot of. I'll tell you what, I've seen something that I really do like a lot. That. Clown face. They were, they were from the front of the building. They're wonderful. I really like they those. Are. I literally rescued them from a back back cupboard here and really? put them on the wall, and they are that sort top of, one's superb. It's fantastic, isn't it? And it's good. It's it's really nicely sort of it's just aged beautifully. Stressed now. These painted clown faces date back to the 1920s and would make unique statement pieces. With minimal restoration, they could be worth between 400 and 600 pounds each. What's the chance of those being for sale? Well, I don't know. It's sort of... Drew and T are salvaging at the seaside in Great Yarmouth, but there's no time for a donkey ride. At the Hippodrome Circus, there's plenty to see, but little to buy. Though Drew's found one item he's reluctant to walk away from. That. Clown face. What's the chance of those being for sale? Well, I don't know. It's sort of... That's sort of difficult, cos they are really part of the Hippodrome history. This is... I get torn, cos yeah. I think it should be here, but I know I yeah. want to buy it yeah. as well. So... I think that is... Not for sale? Not really for sale. I'm talking myself out of it here, cos I'm guilt, I think guilt's I, kicking in. It's only on... It's only on hardboard. Well... So doesn't matter. I'm, it's I'm going to talk you out of it now. OK, go on, I'll leave it, I'll walk away. I was really pleased that Drew was really respectful of the museum status of, of my collection. I was sort of worried that he would really sort of want to make it difficult for me for not to sell things. So it was, a, it was a, a really nice... He backed off. Peter's attachment to his collection, along with Drew's conscience, have conspired to prevent any deals in the museum. But determined not to give up, Peter takes Drew into the Hippodrome's back rooms. This is my sort of chill-out room. Where disused furnishings have accumulated over the years. In here, I've got a whole set of letters, yeah. Yep. The they're letters only really basic, all... they're only a bit of ply, yeah, but they're sort they're of... all original. I like the... I like the patina on them. How Hang old on. are these, then? They must be prior to 1950s. 50s, OK. Yeah. We've got everything. C, U... They're, they're all, they will all be there. And there's, there's an S over it. Yeah. IR. Bring it in to bring it back out. Cool. OK. Yeah, I quite like those. They're really These basic. These mid-20th yeah. century timber letters have been salvaged from the roof of the Hippodrome and would likely be sold as a set. With some restoration, they could fetch around £350. What, what would you want for those? But make me an offer. Hundred pounds. Okay. Is yeah. that fair? Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. that's that's yeah. sort of fine. Right. It's cheap enough to make yeah. it interesting yeah. for me, and it's okay. a fair price. Yeah. Great. Okay, Thanks, Peter. There you go. That's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> With a deal finally made, the team head back upstairs for a quick comfort stop. Pete really wants to show me the uh, gents. Another really odd thing to happen in a day, but hey, you know, it's one of those days we're just going to roll with it. Oh, oh wow! Look at that. Look at that. That's superb. Wow. This is my favourite sign. This was actually oh, from yeah, look at that. Billy Smart Circus. Yeah. It's toured all over the country. Wow, that is one hell of a toilet. <laughs> it's fantastic. Isn't <laughs> yeah. it amazing? Isn't it amazing? That's superb. Yeah. Superb. What a thing. You go in, it's this, this like marvel of Victorian engineering. And then he's decorated that with loads and loads of old enamel signs. It just works. If you're gonna go, that's the place to go. Unfortunately, I don't need to use it. Oh, I'm all right. Oh. Peter's lavatory is quite a spectacle, but has failed to generate a sale. 
It appears that Drew's strategy of hunting in unusual places won't always bring home the bacon. With one purchase under my belt, I am not really going to cover my cost today at all. Uh, so not good, but we'll keep looking. Where are we off to now? We're going to go down outside. But Peter's got one last trick up his sleeve, which he hopes might appeal to Drew. So what are you talking about, selling so these, the signs off the front? Those signs there. When are they coming down? I can get them down for you if you were interested. I think the circus ones, when they're down, I'd be interested in them, for sure. Circus, circus, I mean, that's got to be, you know, something interesting, hasn't it? These hand-painted letters would be sold as two separate words. With some restoration, each set could fetch around £350. I don't know, what sort of money would you want for the pair of them once they're down? Because we can, we can pop back, I can send Gavin up in the van. Yeah, I think you can make me an offer. Make um, me an offer, and then we'll see. If you get the pair of them down and they're not too wrecked, um, 250 Yeah. Each? Set? Yeah. Set for the pair. For the pair. Yeah, because they they're just ply. I'm looking at them now, they're not like yeah. a heavy grade board. They're just ply. I mean, um, OK, for you, We'll get them down. Let me know when they're down. Yeah. Cheers. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Lovely. I haven't done that before. Never bought signs off the front of the yeah. building. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I think it is a first for me buying the letters off the side of the building. I can't remember doing it. Maybe I've done it off shop fronts, but they're already down, or the guys are in the process of taking them down. But no, not done that before. It might do be a day's work in you after all. <laughs> Peter. Thank you. Enjoy. Really enjoyed Enjoy. it. Loved That's the great. museum. Loved the museum. It's <laughs> wonderful. Thank God you did it. Have a good trip. Super. Well, it's been fun. Yeah. Great. Thank <laughs> Take you. care. Good Thank luck you. with it all. Have a good trip. Nice to meet you, man. Cheers. See you later. Cheers. Bye-bye. Well, it wasn't a bad day. No, it was a good day. I really enjoyed really myself today. Lovely fella. Coming in a nice, yeah. nice bloke. Not good buying, but not terrible. You no. know, save the day, those uh, two circus circus signs at the end of the day. Circus, circus, circus. Circus, circus, circus. circus. Onward and northward. We're going north. Yeah, we're going north, aren't we? Eventually. Back in North Wales, Drew is keen to show Rebecca and the team the salvage recovered from his Norfolk trip. Here you go, have a look at these guys. Off, um, a ferry. They're off um, a yacht. Well, I think they've got a certain look I, to I them. I really like those. They're good, aren't they? They're all hardwood. I think probably right. Yeah. And then there's this, which is superb. Oh, that's special. But look at that. It's got writing on the inside. That's really, that that's lovely? really look special. Look at colour. The, and what the do you do with... Don't throw that away. Take it off. Take it off. Yep. Take it off and just have the lamp. Lovely. Isn't it lovely? Yeah. Uh, then we've got a pile of those. 15 of them, 10 of each. Lighting and seats. Yeah. Perfect. Alex, the French polisher, is given the task of restoring the Martham boat chairs. The damaged pieces are removed. Some have been fitted on better than others. And new pieces cut to size. A hard metal edge is used to burnish the replacement pieces and give a weathered look. OK, there you go, perfect fit. Alex finishes by mixing wood dyes to match the original shade. It's a match, just like that. Once you get the polish on and the stains, they'll come up lovely. So, yeah. The blue lamp is ready for sale having been thoroughly cleaned, repaired, and converted to electric. Blue is such an unusual colour. We get green enamels, green enamels, green enamels. It's quite rare to get white, um, but to see that lovely blue, that's its real strength. It's stunning, actually. Meanwhile, the Hippodrome Circus letters require little work. This one and the team assembles to give their verdict. More letters. More letters. More red letters. We've got the clowns, now we've got the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Bought these as well. 
Oh, they're cool. Smokers. They're cool. Same again as those. I like those because they were just so battered. Mm. Just a yeah. bit, they're so sort of beaten up. Why, why couldn't you get the other They're ones? still attached to the building, this time. Like, <laughs> in the, like in the picture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the circus signs, the colour's great, uh, great big shapes, sell really easily. A good find. I look forward to seeing all the other signs that are still stuck down there. OK, so that's okay. it. Back to work. Let's go. Drew and T are back in the van and on their way to Manchester. There are going to be a couple of Lowry's Lowry now. There's right? bound to be. There's yeah. always a Lowry. It's yeah. Manchester. No, oh, not another one. <laughs> oh, throw, throw another oh. Lowry on the fire. <laughs> it's about a 90-minute drive across the border. A short trip, but one which Drew hopes will yield big results. We're going to see a guy called Pete. He runs a uh, house clearing and antiques shop up here in up Manchester. We're a reuse organisation, reusing unwanted furniture, finding new homes for things. So we deal with everything from university cabinets right through to modern office furniture, right through to historic pieces. We also do house clearance and standard furniture as well. Um, and that's pretty much what we do. A furniture clearance facility in the middle of a suburban street on the outskirts of Manchester is not Drew's most glamorous hunting ground. It certainly doesn't look dissimilar to a junkyard but Drew knows better than to prejudge appearances. And the fast turnaround of businesses like these means there's always the chance of finding interesting stock. Oh, my good God, look at that. It's um, picturesque, I would call I, I it. cannot wait to get in there, but I wouldn't want to live next door to it. <laughs> Pete. Pete. Drew, how are you doing? Drew. Nice, nice to meet you. Hey, uh, Pete. Hey. T. How are you doing? Glad you could make it. You. Yeah, well, it's just up the road, to be honest. Yeah, Surprised you haven't been before. You should come all the time. You come every day. I should come every day. Every day. Yeah. That's what we do. Turnover is what we do. Nothing's got prices on. You know the sort of thing I'm after. Some things have got prices on. Um, tell me what we're going to pay. It's, you know, we, we, right. we, we, you know, I'll don't, tell you what I yeah. want to pay. Yeah. We're not that don't, big. Don't I'm, do not, I'm not saying... My new favourite shop. Don't, don't encourage me with that. I can't guarantee I'll agree with you, but, you know... We know Oh, I'm going to live here. Pete, Drew and T wind their way through the mounds of furniture and Drew's expert eye soon spots something. There. Yeah. Oh, so these, these cases these are the same. Are, oh, I see. These documents, I love... God, I love these. These are just... The engineering on these is fantastic. Yeah. Isn't it? It's so simple. OK, well, these two complete. They look it. Yeah. Yeah, double-sided. Not twisted. These early 20th century industrial archive shelves have been reclaimed from a Manchester museum. With some restoration, they could sell for approximately £700 per unit. Money, where are we? What do you want? Well, we have had a, we had a big volume of them before. Mm. Um, and I was selling them in the trade at that point at 4 50 a piece. 450 quid each. Yeah. That is, that's pricey in that nick. For them. Uh, uh, yeah. You may see more of them than I do, but I think they're quite yeah, rare. Yeah, yeah. I think they're quite on trend, if you can yeah, yeah, <laughs> say yeah. such a thing. So you want him on 950. I'm at sort of 600 quid. It's a lot lower than I want. It is. I mean, what about these ones as well? What were you asking for these? We get 350 for these. 350 for those, and you've got how many of these? Two. Just the two. So, so, I mean, so if we did sort of six, five, so 1100 for the four. Well, I'm at 16. That's quite a distance apart. At Up Manchester Clearance Facility on the outskirts of the city, Drew has made a useful local contact. Hello. Pete. Pete. Drew, how are you doing? Drew, nice, nice to meet you. meet you. And he's also set his sights on some hugely desirable archive shelves. Money, where are we? What do you want? But can he get a good deal and keep a good relationship with Pete? So six, five, so 1,100 for the four. Well, I'm at 16. That's quite a distance apart. We can meet in the middle. What's that, 13.50? Mm. 12 sounds good. 
13. 12 and a half. Do you want to come and see the tracks? 13. Good. Doing the first deal with Pete is not so important because it's something he's doing all the time. So all I need to do is just find, you know, where his margin is. I don't want to knock too much off him because I do want him to come back to me with some more of this stuff, you know? So it's a, it's a, a difficult game to play, always. It's a great start and Pete is keen to dig out further items for Drew's yeah. inspection. There's, there's random things which might... Yeah, I quite like that. That's, uh, might appeal to you. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, that's isn't cool it? Uh, that's I bought one of these last week. It's all about condition. Oh, yeah. yeah. They've got to be mint. That's quite, that, is that, that's quite little as well. That's a child's one, is it? I don't know. But they have to be perfect. Oh, right. All of this stuff, very, very collectible. Mm. Huge collector's market. You know, one. retro cars, it's bikes. It's quid, that. You know. Condition, condition, condition. Well, even you could wear it. Do you not have a...? I've got a Vespa. I'm into Vespa. Vespas, but... He's got a little head. It'll fit on it. Yeah. You sure you're not tempted? No. I think that's just confirmed it. Has it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pete's quite a character. He's uh, got a, a great little business going here. He's clearing, you know, warehouses and offices and shops and universities of stuff, and there's a lot of guys employed in there and an awful lot of stuff coming through his hands. Really interesting person to know. So, yeah, anything else you think might uh, float my boat? Well, I've got a pair of doors. They're not in very good nick. Yeah. Um, but they're not like anything I've ever had before. Do you want me to jump up and see if I can have a look in there? That was going to well, be. I can get it. No, no, leave it there. Seriously. You can get it onto yeah. there. And then. Oh, that's better. You can see quite a lot of damage to them, but there's a hang up or something. You know, just to go on a wall. There you go. <laughs> Condition. Too far gone. Just that. There's just too much leather missing off that one down there. Just too knackered. Too knackered. Yeah. T, yeah. you're all right. They're, they're absolutely knackered. Well, oh, cheers, T. Okay. Wait, right that. I like that. It's good. Little ladder. We should buy that. You need one of them for like getting to work surfaces in the kitchen and stuff, <laughs> don't you? You know where the kitchen is, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do kitchen very well. Deciding to pass on both the doors and the ladder, Drew heads to the back of the warehouse in the hope of making another purchase. I find. There you go. What about these? What about these here? Palace. Did that say palace? It, yeah. I've got a broken C. Right, so this was what? Palace what was this? Palace Theatre, Manchester. It's quite a famous theatre, really. It's a shame the sea's broken, isn't it? Yeah. Have no, you got all the bits? No. No, I don't think so. These carved wooden letters have been reclaimed from the historic Palace Theatre in Manchester, which opened in 1891. The mid-20th century letters were probably salvaged when it was refurbished in the 1970s. And, once restored, could sell for approximately £1,500 as a complete set. Um, how much are they? Are we looking at just a letter? The C's of no value, obviously, so... Uh... Well, the palace is very important to, to the history of Manchester, really. Right. So, and that's see... iconic to the front of it. If you look at the older yeah. pictures... This is this yeah. is him building up yeah. to a very yeah. large price. No, 700 quid. That's too much. 700 pound is... No. Well, I mean, if you broke it up, what are you going to get per letter, surely? They've got to be a couple hundred pound a piece, just as letters, aren't they? I'm thinking I'm sort of a, a pretty firm 500 quid. Well, where could you buy it cheaper? I can. I can, I do. Because there's only been one word but... off the front of the palace there, <laughs> as far as I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'm at five. Can you go up another 10%, 550? You've got your own van here, haven't you? You're going to throw in what's left of the sea? We're going to have them at that. So, all right, cheers. So the paint's sort of just right. So once they're polished, they're going to be a standalone item that's going to look, you know, superb anywhere. Just cool. Just cool item. Who doesn't want a five foot eight? Yeah, everybody haggles. At the end of the day, I want to deal with him every day of the week. I don't want to sell him something at such a high price that he can't come back, and he doesn't want to cut me so deeply that I won't deal with him again. You know, you can kill a sheep once, but you can shear it every day, can't you? So, come for a cup of tea. 
I will do. Cup of tea. Pete, thank you. Yeah, pleasure to do this with you. Lovely. Knowing guys like Pete are out there, and even now knowing Pete, it's great because he's a fantastic resource for me. Because remember, this is the supply chain, so you know he's part of the process, and so am I. And we all need each other. Brilliant Loads of stuff. Great, well worth the call. And I think we dropped Lucky. Yeah, they wouldn't have been there, you know, by the end of the week. Yeah, those. Uh, Can you hear them? Yeah, bouncing. <laughs> those broken things. Those broken in the things. <laughs> you tie those on. Yeah, tied them to something. Each other. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. But my customer base for the big wording like that one in Palace is very, very small. Yeah. Maybe I could get Will's on the phone. <laughs> hey? He could, he could hang it off his helicopter. That's who we should be selling stuff to, T. To, uh, to royalty. To royalty. Do you think so? Would they have you in their house? No. No, I wouldn't have you in my house, <laughs> to be honest. There you go. Back in North Wales, the items are unloaded from the van. The pieces we picked up in at Manchester are perfect. They're very much just exactly what we do. Just a bit of work now for Gavin. A couple of days, I think, sort of cleaning and polishing properly, get that letter repaired by Alex, and then hopefully get them on the website middle of next week. While Gavin cleans the Palace Theatre letters using a car polish to preserve the original colour, Alex works on the damaged letter C. Oh, so it's big, really big. So we're going to have to make a section that continues the curve round and it's strong enough to hold the two of them together. The broken pieces are stuck back together using a special glue, which expands to fill the gaps. He cuts a new curve, which is fixed to the original letter using a wooden frame to keep it in place. The finished letter is sanded and coated with a thin, dark polish to create a uniform aged effect. The restoration team's quick work on the Martha and Bolt lamp has paid off. That's perfect. It's been sold to a buyer in London's East End. You can do. Excellent. The age of it, the wear on it, the colour is excellent the shape of the glass. It just has a presence all of its own. It's a brilliant centrepiece. On that wall there, please, go. Meanwhile, the complete set of palace letters are showroom ready. Sit, 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 sit. Sit. And Alary and Enzo join forces to photograph them to their best advantage. I'll see what you've done. <laughs> Very clever. I wonder why this dog loves you so much. It's because you're just giving biscuits all day long. 